Block by Block, which was created in 2012 with the radical idea to integrate the computer grain Minecraft into public space planning to get community members more involved in the planning process. Minecraft is easy to use and people of all ages, backgrounds and education levels can pick it up quickly. It's a surprisingly effective and cost-effective way to visualize a three-dimensional environment in a format designed for rapid iteration and idea sharing. So in this way, Minecraft helps neighborhood residents to model their surroundings and to visualize possibilities to express their ideas about what they would particularly like to see, what needs changing and why, and to drive consensus and accelerate progress which forms a really integral part of the democratic consultation process. Early pilot projects in Nairobi and Mumbai have evolved into the current block-by-block methodology, which is designed to engage people who don't typically have a voice in public projects, from women and children to elders, disabled residents and refugees. In this way, Block by Block gives neighborhood residents the training, the tools and the platform to participate and contribute their ideas in a really collaborative process that helps all participants express and expand their views. The outcome is co-created public spaces that serve the needs of all residents, a deeply ingrained sense of ownership, which increases the odds of long-term success and ultimately stronger communities. The block-by-block process is designed to build momentum and mobilize community engagement and policy change at the local, national, and even global levels. The foundation has funded and activated dozens of public space projects in more than 35 countries around the world, helping to improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of people in the process. Block-by-block also makes its innovative methodology available to any community interested in actively engaging its residents to improve parks, markets, squares, playgrounds, gardens, waterfronts, streets and other shared spaces. In a case study from Lusaka, Zambia, we look at how a unique collaboration of partners worked to promote prosperous, inclusive and resilient urban settlements and ensure Zambia's towns and cities become engines of national growth. This is demonstrated, or at the very least re-emphasized by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the need for a better understanding of the city's informal settlements. Working together, the International Growth Center, the Commonwealth Association of Architects, CAA, and Ordnance Surveys, set out to deliver detailed spatial data to map both planned and unplanned settlements. Ordnance Survey developed a process to produce maps quickly and cost-effectively using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Using Ordnance Survey's automated approach, in Lusaka, 420 square kilometres of detailed base map was created in just 10% of the time compared to manual processes. With a better understanding of where everything is, governments are able to make evidence-based policy decisions and plan services to improve the quality of life for their citizens. On Futures, by Olalekan Jayathis and SCI Arc Channel, On Futures is a series highlighting how designers, artists, curators and writers envision alternative cultural and architectural temporalities that map out an expansive range of possible futures. Brooklyn-based visual artist Olalekan Jayafis creates work that critiques the present by looking at the past and the future. Trained in architecture at Cornell University, he blends techniques and skills from the field with speculation drawn from a range of science fiction imaginaries, from Afrofuturism to solarpunk, a genre that envisions possible ecological futures under climate crisis. Best known for his digital illustration in the series Shantytown Megastructures, an imagined Lagos, Nigeria, in which contemporary ad hoc construction practices are extrapolated into fantastical vertical settlements, his practice crosses between disciplines and mediums, taking shape as drawings, films and installations. Jayafis' work has been shown at the Shenzhen Biennale of Architecture and Urbanism, the Studio Museum in Harlem, 
and the Guggenheim Bilbao. His large-scale public artworks were shown at Coachella in 2017 and recently along the waterfront in Alexandria, Virginia. He is one of the participants in the 2020-21 cycle of Exhibit Columbus and the upcoming MoMA exhibition, Reconstructions, Architecture and Blackness in America. Our final offer is not so much a case study as it is a leap of imagination. We present Nix McLean in the studio with Danielle Lufer, who presented Undersea Cables to Street Corners in Section 3 of Module 1. Nix writes queerly about technology. They are a transdisciplinary researcher writing on digital technology and media and LGBTIAQ plus identities and communities from a post-structuralist, anti-racist, queer feminist lens. The influence of their lived experience as a queer transgender non-binary person and their background in gender-based violence, HIV AIDS, LGBTIAQ plus rights and digital rights advocacy can be seen in the social justice aspect of their research. Nix and Danielle will be dreaming up an idea which they will elaborate in greater detail in a conversation together.